Tales from my D&D &D campaign. Previously, Angel is joined by a new partner, Mora Irisha, an Aventi bard from the organization. Meanwhile, Little One had also chosen the leadership feat, and his henchman was huge and had six legs. Her name is Rainbow Dash. Angel launches off her mount, using her magically enhanced speed along with her slippers of spider climb to sprint along the sides of buildings, leaping the gaps and cutting across to the other street, closing in behind the cloaked Kuatoa. I'd like to congratulate you on behalf of the Duke for your excellent work. As you know, Duke von Christoph has a standing order that any captured Deluvian is to be held until he can personally interrogate it. I'd like you to get to Fort Keeling as quickly as possible, talk to the survivor, and see if you can pick up the orc's trail. The orcs appear to be heading southward into Gruul. We're looking for orcs carrying three humans. Have you seen them? Carrying humans? We saw them, that's for sure. They were Gruul orcs with Antor, but they were attacked and slain near here by a group of foreign orcs from the desert. I didn't see that coming. These outsiders killed the boys, killed the prisoners too. I saw some of the battle myself, and at least one of those deaths did not look like an accident. Then the foreigners took something from the orc leader and headed back northeast towards Uruk. They killed the talker? No, no. She didn't literally mean with Untor. All the orcs in the province are kind of Untor's boys, as opposed to the orcs from the desert. Was Marp a desert orc? Definitely. The desert orcs probably think all gruel orcs are soft. I mean, they steal food for half the year without fighting for it. These orcs would certainly disagree. They do lots of stuff. They're constantly fighting monsters. And years ago, they used to fight Kuatoa all the time in Verandi. There's not much left to see. We buried all five orcs in a field with their weapons sticking up out of the ground, or sticks if their weapons were taken. When any orcs die, we need to make sure it doesn't look like we're hiding it. Wouldn't want to get blamed. We buried the three humans, too, but they had no weapons. All this had happened the previous evening, meaning the heroes had virtually caught up to the initial kidnappers, just in time to begin a whole new chase. Were these new guys in a hurry? More of a hurry than that first bunch. If you want to catch the orcs that killed your friends, you'll have to overtake them before they reach the sand desert. Otherwise, you'll never find them without big magic. They thank her for all her help and ride out, tacking northeast in pursuit. Rather than cutting through a large swath of gruel, this gang appear to be heading first for the rocky plains of southern Angor, at which point they will presumably turn due east for Uruk. The party passes a few more villages on the way out of gruel, though village may be a strong term, as each has only a very small number of huts. Soon they have to rest, far from the first time this journey, though now that the chase is on for real, there's a lot more tension around when and how to camp out. This horse is probably big enough for us all to sleep on. Till we fall off, we need to find a way to anger ourselves. It's a little too rough to fully rest while she's moving anyway. Draven needs to invent a new version of that magical hut spell. Mordenkainen's Magnificent Caravan. Mord's Magnificent Trailer Home. Mord's Magnificent Motor Home. Mord's Mobile Hotel. Nah, we're not going to rent it out. Aw. What we need is an ocean of amphetamines so we don't have to sleep. You could just become undead. Or a construct. I'd be very tempted to become a construct, but the Artificer Prestige class for that is severely suboptimal. Maybe if I find some other way. Your wife might not approve of that. The next day they leave the farmlands behind, passing the edge of Gruul into the rocky tundra of Angor. These guys must be moving at a pretty good clip, because after another day of riding, you still haven't caught up with them. The desert proper is still more than a week away, so there should be lots of time to overtake them. But you are going to have to rest again, unless you want to push on and make the horrible endurance checks and stuff. If we're pushing, they must be pushing too. We don't want to get fatigued before fighting orcs. You could use flying to scout ahead and find them. Issue a proper challenge. Draven doesn't spot anything nearby, though, and he isn't about to go solo, so they rest again. And the next day they ride on until Angel spots an ambush in an area where the rock is covered by drifts of windblown sand. Alright, we should hold off a couple rounds so I can put speed and orcbane on my crossbow, then ideally open combat by switching to fireball wand mode. Just glass parking lot the area. 
By the time Angel spots the orcs well concealed in the sand, they're only 80 feet away. If you stop the horse, they will notice. That's fine, we'll stop Rainbow Dash, and I'll stand up on her back. I am Little One, Slayer of Marp. The orcs rise, five of them, no longer trying to hide. Their armor seemed to blend in with the sand. It was more than just the color. These orcs, like, two or three can take a small town. And they killed how many other orcs? Five. And they didn't lose one? Conservation of ninjutsu, dude. It'll be fine. I'm Hag. Yes, you are. This is Gort, Ein, Ro, and Kor. Kor uses a shield and has a big X on his face. That's where you put your arrows. Oh, okay. As I said, my name is Little One. This is Black, Draven, Angel. The horse is Rainbow Dash. Mora, Mora. That's one car horse you got there. That it is. Your sword is pretty impressive, too. Yeah, but I'm not carrying it. I'm holding my new spear. I'm also not wearing anything. You're naked? I have my clothes on. But I mean I'm not wearing my full plate, because I have my ring of arming now. Why did you come out of the desert and attack those other orcs? Were you sent by visions from Grumsh or whoever? No funny stuff like that. If you can beat us, I'll tell you who sent us. If we beat you, you'll be dead. Mora hastes the party, but Draven notices the orcs are casting some kind of psionic self-buffs as they inch forward while their leader talks. If they're buffing, I should dispel them. That would start the fight for sure, but things are quickly coming to a head anyway. I'm just trying to buy Draven as much time as I can to buff. As long as I get two rounds, I'm good. Though, if Mora's hasting us all, I can buff my crossbow with axiomatic instead of speed. It looked like Little One could have kept Hag talking at least a little longer, but the other orcs looked a lot less patient. So Black dispelled them, knocking a buff off each one of them, and the battle was joined. As Little One instantly donned his dragon scale plate, Angel cast Blur and Advance, leaving Mora alone on the horse, using improved invisibility so she could attack without revealing herself. Draven attacked Hag, only hitting one of three shots, but his anti-orc, anti-chaotic weapon still did 30 damage, or would have, except she resisted a couple points of physical damage and all of his weapon crystals 1d6 fire. Gort charged, but Little One was now using a long spear, plus steadfast boots, which acted as though he was always readied against a charge. Between the double damage attack from Steadfast and the attack of opportunity from his reach weapon, he did 46 damage before the orc even reached him. Injured but undeterred, Gort struck down with his massive hammer. What's your armor class against touch attacks? My touch, AC? These orcs were using the Deep Impact Psionic Feet, an ability with several prerequisites which let them make any weapon attack as a touch attack much harder to defend against, at least once per fight. And they were using that to leverage the power of their martial maneuvers, in this case hitting Little One for 38 crushing damage. If only you had retaliation properties. I have retaliation properties. It's called Ballista Throw. So Little One takes the hit, but on his turn, he grabs the attacker and spins around, using the momentum to hurl Gort 60 feet as a projectile, dealing damage to another orc he hits along the way, and leaving him prone a good distance from the party. Angel deals 14 damage with her attack of opportunity as Ain closes with a devastating charge. And York rolls a critical hit! Take... 57 damage! Did you roll for Blur? Oh, right. 20% miss chance? And he misses. He attacked you perfectly, except that wasn't you. He's so very disappointed. Invisible atop Rainbow Dash, Mora fires her repeating crossbow into Hag again and again, dealing much less damage per hit than Draven's, but she rolled much better, so she too did over 30 damage in total, such that the orc leader was already bloody. Black casts Moonbolt a spell which reduces the strength of two targets by 3d4, and he rolls the maximum for a brutal 12-point strength penalty. That's minus 6 to hit and damage, and half that much even for the one who passed his save. Those two advance anyway, and with a heroic surge of willpower, they each shake off the Moonbolt's effects completely with a guttural shout. In a sense, negating Black's spell, though it did take both of their actions to do so, compared to the one action it took him to cast it. Little One's the closest now, he's done the most damage, and frankly, he struck Hag as the most exciting opponent. 
so she charges him, using deep impact like the others to strike with deadly accuracy. Although she lacked the battle leader's charge maneuver Ayn had used, she dealt 25 damage plus another 16 points of acid from a psionic power. Then she heals 3, but takes 2 damage from her vicious weapon. <laughs> not complicated at all. Ooh, look who's next. Angel? Nope. At the bottom of the initiative order, Rainbow Dash. I like how everyone's clumped together nicely. On his command, the huge armored hexapetal horse surged forward, trampling all in her path. Each orc had to choose either a reflex save to avoid the damage, or to take damage automatically but get an attack of opportunity against the stampeding beast. And, it turns out, the difficulty of saving against Rainbow Dash's trample was so high, they had very little chance to avoid, choosing the attack instead. Despite a penalty to hit, they hacked her for a sum of 60 damage, but she trampled them for 26 damage each, ending just past Gort, who was still on the ground after Little One's throw. Angel hits Ayn, leaving him quite beat up, but so is Hag. And now it's Draven's turn. Kill steal. Hey, I did more damage than anyone else to her. It isn't kill stealing if I've done my share to the target. Draven shoots Hag down with some serious damage, and Black casts close wounds as a swift action to make sure she doesn't bleed out, so they could talk to her after. Gort stands up, being bloodied by a hoof of opportunity in the process, and knowing he couldn't drop Rainbow Dash quickly enough on his own, he spends the turn recasting his psionic shield and changing to a defensive stance. Black is duking it out with Vro. He hits the orc for 18, but Vro bone crushes him back for 35. But for hitting me, he takes 17 plus d6 plus d8, 26 damage. He hit me for 35, and I do 26 back to him. These orcs are just having a really bad day. Didn't help that you dispelled 4 AC from all of them. Is that what it was? Little One activates his Burning Blade maneuver for a damage boost on all attacks, then rolls two natural ones, and missed the third attack to boot, partly due to Kur interfering with his shield. You know what the problem was? I tried to kill steal from Draven. Mora scores only one hit this round, and one of the orcs touch attack Bone Crusher's little one for 27, but the next one, having already spent his psionic focus for the fight, has to attack normally and misses. However, Rainbow Dash turns around and tramples Gort for a second time, dropping him. Angel attacks Ayn using her Heartseeker amulet on her least accurate attack to make it a touch attack, a little bit like their own psionic trick, and subsequently hits with all three strikes, getting Ayn very low, only for Draven to hit him for 18. A terrible damage roll, but still barely finishing him. Then he also drops Vro with a 32 damage hit, and suddenly Kur is the only orc left standing. Now that's kill steal. Outnumbered 5 to 1, 6 to 1 counting Rainbow Dash, Kur, despite being relatively uninjured, is rapidly felled by Black and Little One. And as Black uses his healing skills to make sure the leader survives for questioning, the party changes focus rapidly to looting. Most of these orcs were using non-magical weapons, with a variety of dirt-cheap weapon crystals and low-level psionic tricks to get the most of them. But they all had magical armor of the desert, an enchantment which gave them a conditional plus two armor class and a whole host of desert survival benefits, as long as they were in sunlight with enough sand nearby. Hag herself had better quality full plate and a plus one vicious greatsword, a weapon which did plus 2d6 damage, twice the bonus of a regular flaming or shock weapon, but dealt 1d6 damage back to her with every strike. She combined that with a Crystal of Lesser Life Drinking, which healed her three hit points with every strike, almost cancelling out the vicious damage. The other thing she has is the archaeological find that started all this. Draven, you're pretty sure that A, it's Itaran in origin, ooh, and B, it's just a part which has been disconnected from the controls of a larger device. You'd think it's from a system for controlling a flow of power. That was very intriguing, but questions about the item gave way quickly to questions of how to handle their captive. I assume you're stripping all her weapons and stuff. Of course. Are you stripping everything? Like, taking off her armor? Well, if we have to kill her, then yes, but otherwise... I'll take her armor. You lost. Tough. 
I say if she's alive, it's stealing. They're very noble, right? If she's alive, I'd say leave it alone. I'd say take the armor and say if she tells us who sent her and all that, we'll give it back. We'll disarm her, but we don't need to bribe her. She already said she'd tell us. That, and I think it's an honor thing. I think we should literally stand her up in her armor with her weapon and ask her. What's she got? Like five hit points? She's actually around zero. She's just not bleeding to death. Exactly. What's she going to do? So, to be clear, what's the consensus? Are you just taking her weapon before she wakes, or her armor, too? We're going to have to kill her. We're, we're going to take all her stuff and kill her. That's what I was saying. Maybe I can turn her. If you can get her on our side, that's great, but otherwise, we're killing her. After she answers our questions. Obviously. So they strip everything of value from Hag and wake her up. Ugh, you really are hard. Very ka. With a ka horse. The name is Rainbow Dash. And you just lost some respect. Okay. Hell no. I'm so ka, I can name my horse Rainbow Dash. Under the circumstances, I think you're definitely the person to conduct the interview. The rest of us will try to look diplomatic or intimidating. So, you promised to tell us who sent you. I did say I'd tell ya, and I'll tell ya. Twas Del. He told us to come get this thing from the humans and to kill everyone who saw it. Not sure what he wants with it. Who's Del? Del's another of uh, Kajord's boys. We's all from Kajord. You can tell from how my boys was trained. They were good. Sure were. Yeah, if we'd been ambushed, it would have been a different story. Anytime we can prepare for combat, we own it. Del's an hard one. You should see the scars on him. Everyone listens to him. Even Kajord listens to him most of the time, long as he isn't causing trouble. What happens if someone challenges Kajord for the leadership? Then somebody dies. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens to the winner? Well, Kajord goes back to doing what he usually does. <laughs> <laughs> I love that logic. But what if someone beats Kajord? Hypothetically, humor me. I suppose most of the boys would go over to him. Depends. But Kajord is the strongest there is. Strongest sense for harm. So what do we do with you now? I don't know. I lost fair and square. And I lost all my boys. Can you go back to Kajord? Don't see why not. Don't think Kajord cares that much. Was Del's idea. Del's the one who wanted that thing. Does Del have any other things like this? Has he sent anyone else out for them? No, I... Well... There was them guards who wanted to get in with Kajord. Del told them where to find something in Uman lands to impress them. A big sword? Yeah, a giant sword. Wow. I think we need to talk to Del. He sent an orc band to your family. And that I can't forgive. You took them out too? Wow, you really is an orc killer. I say we take her stuff, give her a non-magical sword, and send her to let Del know we're coming for him. Just because we can. So you're okay with taking her shit now? Well, we leave her her life? Ah, uh, I like the part where we take her stuff. I'm just not sure what we gain from the causing trouble part. I mean, it's cool, like 10 out of 10 for style, but minus a million for practicality. Or we could just put a leash on her and follow her there. We either go find Del or let him come to us, but we need to kill Del. I'm really not sold on sending her as a taunt. I love the taunt. I'm not that keen on taking stuff from someone who's still breathing. From my point of view, we should just kill her. We have Del's thingy, the artifact. Hopefully us having it will inhibit his evil plan. Here's the thing. She's not human, so I don't really care, but she is already defeated. I can't condone... Whatever. Death penalty, man. As far as we know, she's only killed orcs. Actually, the goblin woman said three humans died in a fight, and at least one was intentional. Cold-blooded slaughter. I would rather marry her and have half-orc babies than kill her. My plan, if you guys just released her, was to shoot her with my crossbow. <laughs> nice. Only a few minutes have passed. I still have all my crossbow buffs going on. You probably don't need all that to kill her. I want to make sure. Let's send a message to Dell. Know how we'll send him a message? When we show up and stab him in the kidneys. Yeah. 
So what's the vote? You guys are all gathered around. You all have to decide. And then Draven will shoot her. My guy is all about honor. She's been defeated. Just give her her stuff and let her walk. You're not about honor. You're about justice. She's a murderer. And you're going to release her? As honorary knights or whatever, we totally have the authority to execute her for that. If you want to give her a chance, strip her of everything, let her go out into the desert with not even a weapon. You kidding me? She'd be fine. She's an orc. Look, I will ask her. Openly. You were the leader of this band. Yes. The other day you killed some humans. You don't deny this. No, it's true. We killed them. There. Guilty. The search for Dell begins next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. What's the matter, Dell? Huh? Right, good work, boys. That's one fat scorpion. We feast tonight. Oh, God.